what is going on guys welcome back to another video today we are going to go over the new york giants falling to the green bay packers 23 to 16 so am i am i upset about this not really uh i saw it coming i put this into the prediction video i put it as my lock uh, it's not it's not that i'm not rooting for the team it's not that i'm not a fan i'm just i'm an I'm a prognosticator. You guys get what I'm saying? I'm an analyst. I'm a prognosticator, but I can't let my fandom get in the way of what I believe in. I knew we were going to lose this game. And even before the season started, you know, in the season predictions, I get that we did we do pretty well in Lambeau. Um, and we did keep it close today. But the but I just didn't see I mean Aaron Rodgers is just Aaron Rodgers. I mean, I just didn't see us beating him. And to complete, to be completely honest with you guys, do not think that we're going to, I mean, if Bad Dog, if you're watching this video, I know the Giants look terrible right now, but I just don't, I, I don't think we're going to only win like five games this year. You got to understand, um, I had the Giants in my season prediction video, I had them losing to Minnesota, I had them losing to Green Bay, okay, the only thing that I didn't have them losing to is Washington, and we lost to them by a, uh, two points. So I had us beating Dallas. I had us beating the Saints. Um, I didn't have us beating Washington. That was the only thing that I missed in my season prediction video before the season started. I knew we were going to lose to Minnesota and Green Bay. Okay, that's just games we just have to get out the way. Um, but, I, but something I will agree with you on is that, I mean, our, I'm not very confident in our all in our offense moving forward. We've got the Baltimore Ravens, who are probably the same exact team as us, and we'll see who's probably the 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 better worst team uh, in the NFL. So that's something I just have to put out there for you guys. Uh, do not think we're just gonna win five games this year. I believe we are better than that. I believe we'll pick it up. I'm not gonna say we're gonna pick it up. We're gonna be top five and everything. No, just slow your roll. Just we'll get we'll get things done one step at a time okay we got baltimore it's a winnable game they're exactly like us so we'll see how that plays out so eli manning 18 of 35 199 yards and a touchdown um with a whopping total of qbr which i really love this stat but qbr 21.7 wow sacked three times set for 17 yards i'll get into the o-line later New York rushing. Bobby Rainey was our leading rusher. Five touches for 22 yards. Um, Orleans Darkwa, seven touches for 11 yards. And Paul Perkins, two touches for nine yards. So, the Giants, they totaled 15 carries today. 15 rushes. One of them was Eli, so I'm not. I'm gonna take that out. He runs like a penguin. I mean, he just ran because he wanted to run. I don't know. He just wanted to get sacked. He loves doing that. So I'm gonna take that out. So 14 carries among running backs for 42 yards. 14 carries. Come on, guys. Come on. I mean, the you gotta understand something. I don't care if you're if you're if you have one yard per carry every single time if you ran it 25 to 30 times i guarantee you you are going to break something out i guarantee you you need to keep the defense on your toes uh, on their toes if you run the ball 14 times and wind up giving up on the run you become so predictable especially with a wide receiver like odell beckham who was targeted who was targeted 12 times and only completed a pass to for five receptions Five out of twelve. Why? Because the defense was expecting Eli to throw it to Odell before the snap, uh, before Eli took the snap. Why? Because New York gave up on the run. We didn't run the ball too much. They gave up on the run. Green Bay knew that. They knew who who Eli was going to go to. They know who their number one guy is. They locked down Victor Cruz. He was barely on the field. Sterling Shepard just he was open a lot of the time. Just Eli couldn't hit him. So that leaves Odell Beckham, and he they they covered him. They were double teaming him, triple teaming him, all of the above. So um, you become so one dimensional when you don't run the ball. I don't care if you guys run it one yard per carry. You need to run it at least twenty five 
or 30 times a game to at least get something. You could set up a great run with 25 or 30 carries. You could set up a great play action pass for 25 or 30 carries. You run the ball 25 times, I guarantee you, you will also hit another great play. You will hit a play action pass that goes deep because the defense was on their toes. They're trying to, uh, they're not, you're not gonna be as predictable because you are, you are running the ball and passing the ball, okay? So if I was the coach, I would run the ball 30 time, 25 or 30 times a game. I don't care how much I'm, I'm either losing or gaining um, in the run game. I promise you that. The run game is a crucial part of football. So receiving, Odell Beckham, five receptions for 56 yards, one touchdown, and one kiss of the kicking net, uh, of the kicking net which is always a plus. Style points for that. Bobby Rainey, six receptions for 52 yards, did a great job against <clears throat> against Green Bay's defense. Will tie 37 yards, but could he easily have like 50 or 60 yards because of Eli's inaccuracy, and he could have had a touchdown today. Uh, Jarrell Adams, he needs to get more touches. You guys see him. He caught a pass, and in his run after catch, he was uh, he was shaking people up. Seriously, I mean, Jarrell Adams needs some more touches. And I believe if Jarrell Adams plays well, Larry Donnell could be up in his way out of here, which I, I think we all want that. So, and Sterling Shepard, two receptions for 14 yards. He was open a lot of the times that Odell missed him. Um, our only turnover was Eli fumbling. That's going to happen every single game. So the fact that we only limited it to Eli fumbling and losing a fumble is a plus, believe it or not, because Eli is going to fumble every game. So... He also fumbled two more times in this game. It just didn't count because of the uh, because of the flag. So, our leading tacklers with four with seven tackles, respectively, respectively among four players, leading uh, our team was Jonathan Casillas, Jason Pierre-Paul, Landon Collins, who I just love right now, man. I'm loving Landon Collins right now. And Devon Kennard, who is slowly declining. I just don't. His rookie season was great, but anyway. Um, and uh, JC, JPP, and Landon Collins each had six tackles, respectively, solo. So uh, that means they have one assisted tackle each. So, I mean, good job by the defense. I think they did their part to keep Aaron Rodgers to to under 280 yards or 300 yards. And keep the team, keep the Green Bay Packers to 23 yards. I think you're not, you're, you're asking your defense to do too much if you're do, asking them to do more than this. Um, I think getting a sack could have been very crucial, but I think besides getting the sack, I think they did a good job in containing Green Bay's offense. So let's get into Green Bay real quick. Uh, Green Bay, uh, Aaron Rodgers, 23 of 45, 259 yards. For two touches, uh, two touchdowns, and two interceptions. Um, believe it or not, Eli Manning and Aaron Rodgers didn't really have a different day. Um, it was really everybody around them that was making the difference. Um, but Eli Manning, with his inaccuracies, um, made him worse. But Aaron Rodgers really didn't have a super great game. He he also made a lot of mistakes, threw the ball up, uh, you know, kind of gunslinged it a little bit, uh, try to get it to try to get it to I think Jordy Nelson. Uh, Janoris Jenkins wound up picking that one off, and then Janoris Jenkins also picked off a tipped pass. Uh, that was a great awareness by Janoris Jenkins. So, um, if you look at Aaron Rodgers' uh, yards per attempt, it is 5.8, and Eli is 5.7. So if you think about it, Eli, uh, Aaron Rodgers really didn't do any better than Eli. Um, Eli just with his inaccuracies was terrible, but Aaron Rodgers QBR was 69.4, which is pretty bad. And, but Eli Manning, oh god, 21.7 QBR, that is disgusting. So uh, Eddie Lacy and the crew, 32 carries. This is what I'm telling telling you guys. 32 carries. If you like, I'm saying the Giants struggle with play action rollouts. Okay. Part of that is because they're expecting the run. If you run the ball, like I said, 25 to 30 carries, in this case, 32 carries, you're going to break out a few great play action passes that are going to work. You're going to break out a bit, some big runs, which what the Green, Green Bay did, 
And that's you know, Aaron Rodgers just proved what I was talking about against my own team, and that's pretty sad. So I'm telling you, if you hired me as a coach or the GM or something like that, I would make a better difference than than what we're doing right now in the front office and in the coaching staff. Um, Randall Cobb lit it up on us, nine receptions for 108 yards. Also got demolished by Landon Collins. Hope he's all right. I think it was a little uncalled for from Landon Collins, but I think he just wanted to make his mark. Um, he was trying to set some kind of tempo in the game, and um, it was pretty unfortunate. So, uh, attack, I'm not going to get into that. But Eli Manning was sacked three times for 17 yards. Uh, I think one by Kyler Fackrell. Um, no, uh, one one by yeah, one by Kyler Fackrell, who's doing a pretty good job for uh, the Giants right now. One by Micah Hyde and one by Nick Perry. Um, Clay Matthews also got in for a few pressures that made Eli pretty uncomfortable. So let's move on to the stats. I got a bunch of stats here. This might be a long uh, long video, but let's get it on. And if I sound a little different, I have a cold right now. I don't know what happened, uh, but Florida's changing weather already, so yeah. Uh, and I'll be right back. So let's start off with some key throws that Eli missed. Uh, we got Beckham on the drag route that was thrown behind him. That happened twice on the drag. We've got Will Ty, who which was a touchdown uh, up the seam. Nobody within 15 yards of Will Ty, and he is a speed tight end, so that would have been a touchdown. Uh, but in part, it was still catchable. Uh, Will Ty could have caught that. He had his hands on it, bobbled it, and dropped it, but Eli just made a bad throw there. But it was still catchable, in my opinion. And then you got Cruz that was on a dig route, thrown terribly behind him. I think Eli was actually trying to throw it to the Green Bay defender. Uh, and then you've got Sterling Shepard, who was missed out on a crossing route. Sterling looked pretty upset in this game. He didn't really, he didn't really look happy or confident uh, in the game, which is, um, I mean, you can't blame him. Um, we ran the ball terribly, but it was expected. Again, Green Bay is only allowing 1.8 yards a carry, and we averaged 2.9, so we beat the average. Um, so, I mean, we didn't do terrible by Green Bay standards. Um, yeah, wide receivers were open, but Eli Manning was either inaccurate or under pressure constantly. I, Eli didn't look like he uh, was comfortable at all. It didn't look like he wanted to be there. He didn't look like he wanted to be in Green Bay. It didn't look like he wanted to be in Wisconsin. It didn't look like he wanted to be in the NFL right now because he was under pressure the whole game. He looked uncomfortable, jittery feet, all that. Um, just couldn't throw the ball right, um, so that's that. Eric Flowers got worked, absolutely worked, even if it wasn't a sack. I mean, Eli Manning throws the ball pretty quickly, so, I mean, if, if he would have held it for a second long, he, Eli Manning would have got sacked like five times. Uh, nobody, I mean, Eric Flowers, he couldn't stop, he couldn't stop anything, seriously. So... Um, yeah, again, no sacks in this game. Did we get close? Yeah, but Aaron Rodgers is too fast for Olivier Vernon. Uh, JPP was there, but he, I think he, his objective was not to rush the passer as much. I think he, he took a kind of contained role because I, I, I noticed him staying on the line when he could have broke out. I noticed him actually trying to get to Aaron Rodgers but failed, but I saw him playing most of a contained role trying to stop the run uh, just in case of a... Uh, it is a run on the play action, and then trying to keep contain of Aaron Rodgers, trying to keep him from running the ball himself. So, I mean, Olivier Vernon is just not a number one defensive end, just not. Um, the defensive, like, guys, the defensive backs, they played well. The, the, the corners and the safeties, they played very well, uh, in my opinion. We were, you know, on, at times when Aaron Rodgers got the ball out quickly, it was very hard for them to complete a pass. Except from the play action passes and the boots and stuff like that, the rollouts and so on and so forth, it's just the defensive line not getting there in time. I don't care if you have all your cornerbacks and safeties, Deion Sanders, if they were all Deion Sanders is, um, Deion Sanders. It's hard to say that in a plural way, but um, it, if you have all Deion Sanders out there, you I think Aaron Rodgers would get some passes. Um, on, on all those Dion's because of how long it took for the defensive line to get some pressure. I mean, 
you cannot allow five or six seconds. It's hard to cover somebody for five or six seconds. It really is. This is the NFL. These wide receivers know how to get you off uh, off balance. You can't ask a re you can't ask a defensive back to cover this uh, five for five or six seconds every snap. You can't. They don't have the stamina for it. Um, they're not. They're just not going to be able to. Uh, so that's just what's going to happen. Uh, Janoris Jenkins let himself kept us in the game. Uh, him himself kept us in this game. He had two picks, two great picks, great awareness, absolutely great, phenomenal. He did give up some plays, granted, but again, it's the five second, you know, over five seconds, you're just not going to be able to cover a receiver for that long. So he kept us in the game. Kelvin Shepard, he had a huge fail. Kelvin Shepard could have had probably the game winning takeaway, but. Um, James Starks was a, was able to recover that fumble. I mean, that was just give. I mean, James Starks was just saying, "Here, take the ball." It was it, it was terrible. Kelvin Shepard, I don't. You, you're a football player, man. I'm sure you've touched the football before. You you look like you've never touched one in your in your life, and he he wound up missing. So, um, Keenan Robinson should start over Kelvin Shepard. In my opinion, has better pass coverage, so on and so forth. But um, to, my, my camera's going to probably run out of memory in a few seconds. So, injury report. Damon Harrison with the ankle injury. Um, Dwayne Harris with a jaw. DRC and Eli Apple with a groin injury. And what a grab by Odell Beckham. That was borderline out of bounds, but it was a great grab by Odell Beckham. Um, so, yeah, Keenan Robinson had great pass coverage and should start over Kelvin Shepard at the middle linebacker position. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I know this is a long video, but... I'll see you guys in the next video. Picks come out tomorrow.